This week, we see and double with The Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. <laughs> The year is 1775, and Lucy Monet been thinking her pop Doc Monet been dead for a long ass time. But one day, word come that he actually been on lockdown in Paris for the past 18 damn years. So Lucy and her brother named Jarvis Laurie cruise over to Paris where they meet Doc Alexander's back when assistant, Defarge. Now this cat been looking out for the good doctor whose mind has turned into mush after all them years in the clank. But after some quality time with Lucy, Monet steps out of it and starts going back to his old self. Five years later, Doc Monet and Lucy up in court for the trial of Charles Darnay, who been accused of snitching on the British crown. The prosecution's case against Chucky falls as shit when one of the witnesses say, Charlie boy don't look no different than Sidney Carton, who hooking up his defense with his mad street smarts. Carton and Darnay look so much alike, they could have the same damn mama. Now that he's got free, Darnay start hollering at Lucy, but turn out, player gotta get in line, so he gonna have to grind for some of Lucy's juicy. Know what I mean? Back in P-Town, Darnay's hood rich uncle runs over a little kid with his carriage. But instead of getting tore up about it, he just gets pissed that Poe folks got blood on his 20 inch blades. Later, some peasant gets real tired of that rich white boy and straight ghosts his ass while he's sleeping. Damn. Darnay inherited all that swole family cash, but he don't want nothing to do with that blood money. Instead, he throw up the deuce to old Paris and set up shop in London, where he gonna marry Lucy. Before he do, though, Carton tell Lucy she the only thing that give his sorry ass life meaning. And if he can hook up a sister, he gonna do it. Blood for blood, life for life. She goes ham up in the streets of Paris when the revolution breaks out and rich people getting shanked left and right. One of Darnay's boys gets thrown in the clink, and since he keep a gangster, he head to Paris to bust his boy out. But all them crunk po folk love nothing more than f***ing with rich kids. So it ain't long before Darnay's dumb ass gets locked up too. Nice plan, buddy. So now Lucy and Monet got a head there to bail his ass out. After a year and three months of rotting away in the slammer, the trial goes down, and Doc Monet come out swinging the biggest legit street cred you ever seen. He did the hardest time there is up in that Bastille. So them revolutionaries get all up on his junk and decide to let Darnay go. But then that same damn night, he get arrested again. This time, cause Defarge and his crazy bitch Biddy hating on him hardcore. Up at the new trial, them buses whip out an old letter written by Doc Monet himself, where he calling out Darnay's family for all the crooked sh they did, saying the deeds were so damn whack that even his descendants should get what's coming to him. One unanimous vote later, Darnay gets sentenced to death. Damn. Just when everything seems f***, Carton swings into town, busts into the big house, and knocks Darnay out. Then he trade places with him since they look the same. Darnay gets tossed into a carriage and heads back to London with his woman. As for Carton, fool gets his head chopped off. But at least by saving Darnay, he finally did something legit with his life. Now you might be thinking that this book's main rap is about two separate cities, London and Paris. Sure, Dickens preaching loud and clear about how separate and alone people and places be. Every human creature is constituted to be that profound secret and mystery to every other. But the book actually hinting at the opposite, that everything is more connected than it look at first. Both London and Paris got their fair share of folks in love, turf wars between the rich and poor, and crews bucking social inequality. Truth is, Paris and London are more double than different. And if you keeping it triple OG, you know Chucky D slanging doubles all up in this text. We not only got Paris and London, but the city of God and the city of men, two Monets, Darnay's double dose of trials, Darnay and Carton fresh selves looking exactly like each other. Hell, even Charles Darnay's name looks a whole lot like Charles Dickens. There ain't no better example of that doubling though than how the novel opens up. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. It was the epic of belief, it was the epic of incredulity. It was the season of light, it was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope, it was the winter of despair. For Chuck Deasy, sometimes too, just don't cut it. That fool goes way beyond doubles when it comes to the dankest theme up in here, resurrection. The idea behind the phrase recalled to life, popping up when talking about Doc Monet, Darnay's ass getting saved from losing his head, and most importantly, Carton being metaphorically brought back from the dead. See, even though Carton gets his wrecked in the end, he finally do something good for someone other than himself. It's like he brought his dead as 
Pete's soul back to life by doing something with legit meaning. That's why we see him always dropping lines from the biblical story of Lazarus. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And if you want to resurrect your dad ass wardrobe, get yourself some thug notes threads. Well read for life. Peace.